going to go bigly today if I can make it. Uh, not sure on the trails, but we're going to go basically from the southwest corner of the Kofa to the top right corner, you know, the northeast corner of the Kofa in the next couple days. With any luck. So heading down the McPherson Pass Trail. Uh, Greg's up there tearing it up. I'm just putting along and uh, good times. Pretty. Oh, they ran off. Oh, doggone it. There were two big lizards or iguanas or whatever in the road. Uh, you know, having relations. having relations. They were doing the nasty. And uh, so we stopped. I grabbed my gloves. I was going to get them off the road. But they finally bailed. <laughs> wow, what a what a beautiful, beautiful drive. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful place. Almost done with the bypass. And uh, Greg's actually already up on the uh, official McPherson Pass uh, trail. And I should be there momentarily. And turn left and that'll be awesome now we will go north oh yeah here it is I'll go north and the dead ends into the back of the Castle Dome Museum property and uh, so we're gonna go all the way up to King Road and then to Ingrisser Pass we got a couple full days ahead of us so this is officially my favorite uh, campsite if you're out visiting the museum for a day and you can spend easily a full day at the museum and then camp here. We will be back. Getting up into the Manzanita and the uh, road's getting, uh, yeah, I mean it's not any big deal, still in two wheel drive, but uh, it's getting twisty and tight driving this uh, Great big camper truck. Getting close to the pass, I think. It really is a uh, spectacular trail. Getting closer. So I'm hoping this is the, uh, or close to, the narrowest part of the pass. Although Greg says up ahead is something uh, sketchy. We'll see. So Greg says I'm coming up on something I'm going to want four-wheel drive for. I've been in two-wheel drive all day. Oh yeah, wow, okay. It's basically uh, um, a steep thing. You you won't be able to see this on the camera, but uh, it looks steep. And there's a bypass around it, but I'm going to just go up it, I think. I didn't uh, videotape the hard part. There is a little section that is uh, yeah, problematic for a vehicle like mine. I made it just fine. But I did finally put it in four wheel drive. I think I'm through uh, the worst of it. Greg's quite a ways ahead and hasn't given me any warning, so. Speak of the devil. We are basically uh, in the. Ooh. Always with the phone. We're basically in the pass right now and uh, should be dropping down soon. This really is a remarkable trail. And uh, no uh, wonder that the first people we've seen in three days are on this trail. I mean, wow. And this is like incredible. We're in the, the deep, dark desert. And uh, it's just spectacular. I'm just gonna let the camera roll here for a minute. Stays 
this pretty. Love it. Heading downhill. Now we're talking on the back side of the mountain range now, heading down to the uh, next adventure. Got a long way to go. There's Greg patiently waiting for me to catch up. So we're on the King Road now. Uh, we're going to head back to uh, Quartzsite for fuel. It's 1230 on Sunday afternoon. And uh, here we are. Almost back to the road. I guess they've got some kind of kiosk or thing here. We're coming out here. Most people come in here, but we went way south and uh, checked a bunch of stuff out. Spent two nights, and uh, now, yeah, now we're uh, going to fuel back up and get back out. We are off to refuel and uh, check out the stone cabin and then we'll see. I have perhaps an overly ambitious plan that'll take a couple days. We'll see. Having a good time. So Greg and I are doing a little roadside exploration here what's called the uh, stone house and uh, I don't see the stone house yet but I do see private property and stuff so I don't know yeah looks like there were RV hookups here at some point too uh, oh and there's more over on the right or hookups for uh, houses or mobile homes I don't know, there's some kind of a, uh, something failed here. Ah, there is the fabled stone house. So we just gotta make a quick stop here and check it out before we go get gas and then get back in the dirt. I like the flags, that's cool. And there's the stone house, not a whole lot. Well, here you go. <laughs> it's a decent size, has a well constructed uh, chimney. So we refueled and uh, heading back into the Kofa from a different angle. So this has been a long long slog on the power line or the uh, pipeline road and we still have a long way to go I don't recommend going on the pipeline road uh, I wish we didn't have to but Greg needed fuel and what are you going to do at long last after much suffering the Kofa cabin Dear Lord, it was a long drive to get here on a miserable road and uh, not really very interesting terrain and it looks like it's locked up tight so oh well. Well we made it. This is the Kofa Can Kofa Cabin plaque, and this is the side that's open to the public. First come, first serve. Got a table. Got a 
wood stove, you know, a couple windows, a bunch of candles, and uh, just some random sundries. So here we are. Heading south finally after going to the Copa Canyon or cabin. Uh, really kind of neat different terrain here and I'm glad I was ready for a change. Looks like uh, Greg found our campsite for the night or maybe he was just waiting for me to catch up. We'll find out. I volunteered this uh, dead cat claw. <laughs> For the fire today we got plenty of firewood interesting how the wood changes color and it's soft and then so hard and dark kind of cool boy look at this there's quail and dove everywhere and so ended day number three, another wonderful day. Little did we know, or did I know, that tomorrow would be the biggest, most challenging day of the whole trip.